Hello everyone and welcome to the first video for Scaling Philosophy. I'm recording this to go along with a blog post that I wrote literally over a year ago um, and I want to make sure that I have uh, some engageable video content to go along with this stuff. And I'm doing this video first because it's very foundational to everything that will be discussed on the various platforms for Scaling Philosophy and that is the two core principles two core tools, if you will, of, of what all of the rest of this is going to be built on. And so just getting right into it, the two things that, that I've come to realize are um, extremely powerful tools and absolutely necessary in order to kind of move forward in a productive way when discussing anything controversial or otherwise are the non-aggression principle, which, which is a foundational principle, and we'll get into it a little bit, as well as nonviolent communication, which is more of a technique or series of tools for communication in general. So we'll touch on each of those briefly. I'm going to try and keep this pretty short um, and then delve into things in more depth in the future. So the first is what I consider the foundational pr foundational principle, uh, which is non the non-aggression principle, otherwise called the NAP. And essentially, what the non-aggression principle is, is that you can put a lot of flowery language around it and, and be a little bit more technical about it and say that fundamentally the non-aggression principle is that it is immoral, unethical, otherwise unacceptable to initiate the use of force or violence against a peaceful person uh, and that's really kind of it. And so you can get into a little bit more about what it means to initiate the use of force, um, but there is a, a another short phrase that is a lot more uh, easy to communicate, which really sums up the non the non aggression principle, which is don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. Um, that's a way of of combining the fact that you're not just talking about uh, not literally using physical violence against people, but you're also talking about not using force and not violating the Property rights is a word that you, you can use, although we'll get a little bit more into depth about a lot of these kind of uh, concepts of, of rights and things like that. But um, fundamentally, non-initiation of the use of force isn't just about not punching people. <laughs> it's not just about um, not physically attacking people. Uh, it also means not using force, coercion, blackmail, threats, intimidation, um, not trying to immorally, um, and even the word immoral kind of bears some connotation we'll dig into more in the future, um, but not to do things that harm other people in a variety of ways. Live and let live is another way of saying it. And so as far as we'll kind of touch on, on the overview of what the non-aggression principle is, it's very foundational. If you run everything that you do in your life through that filter, then then you're going to live a happy life and you're going to treat people well. Um, we will clarify some things so that you can understand that there is a little bit of depth to that. And that's where the tool set really comes in. And that's where, for me, these coming together really kind of showed the true um, power of what you can do um, when you combine the non-aggression principle with nonviolent communication. And nonviolent communication is essentially a set of tools um, developed by um, Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. He wrote a book called Nonviolent Communication. He wrote a lot of books. He passed away a few years ago, um, which is sad because I didn't really learn much about nonviolent communication until after he passed away. Um, there's still a very large and active community, um, workshops and things you can do, lots of resources for nonviolent communication. But what is nonviolent communication? Because violence is coming up again, but we're talking about communication. So how does violence apply in communication? Nonviolent communication, the best summary that I found for it um, is nonviolent communication is empathizing with ourselves and others. And I think that really sums it up. It's a way of communicating with people. And by communicating, I don't just mean talking to, I also mean listening to, being able to hear and understand people. A big part of nonviolent communication is the elimination of judgment, meaning you're not just speaking to people in a way that that 
is non-judgmental and is intended to not be perceived as critical or judgmental, but also being able to listen to people who maybe don't know what, what NVC is, don't know how to communicate that way. Most people don't know what it is. Most people are raised to use very violent communication. Um, so it's also a way to listen without judgment, to try and empathize with people and hear what they're trying to communicate, what, what needs, um, what unmet needs they have behind what they say. So nonviolent communication, a lot more complicated than the non-aggression principle, um, just by virtue of being a tool of communication, which is very complicated, and a simple principle of not doing harm to people. Um, but they work very well together because nonviolent communication is the application of the non-aggression principle in communication, in listening and speaking and communicating with people. And it is not easy. I am by no means an expert on nonviolent communication. I have been um, putting significant effort into learning about it and trying to implement it in my life over the past two years. And I tell a lot of people this when I talk about it, it's like I've been working at it every day for two years and I still still feel like I'm not very good at it. Um, so I'm, I'll give you, I'm gonna link some resources just in this video, but then going forward again, part of the process of, of learning, right, is sharing knowledge while also learning. So I will be sharing resources that I learn from, hopefully learning, not hopefully, but definitely learning more. Um, so, so as things go forward, going to constantly be learning and growing. That's that's another part of how um, scaling philosophy uh, wants to, you know, how the, the kind of idea I have for building knowledge, seeking truth, um, things like this. So um, I'll put links below if you guys want to get a little primer on that. Obviously for nonviolent communication, the best place to start is the book, Nonviolent Communication. Um, it is a great read and you also have to kind of be in the right mindset and be ready to receive the information that's in that book when you go through it. And what I mean is you can read the book and not be in a place where you're ready to implement it. You can be skeptical or feel like maybe it's not effective because there's a lot of things in the book that I describe to people as very radical, but they actually make a whole lot of sense. Um, and I'm going to create a different video. I'm not even going to touch on those in this because I want to create a different video that talks about some of the radical ideas of nonviolent communication that are really fantastic. But if you want to read that book, go into it with an open mind and the idea that, that these are very practical uh, ideas, practical tools, things that, uh, and this is how I read the book. It took me a while to read the book because basically it felt to me like I needed about a chapter a week. So I would read a chapter and then I would spend a week trying to implement what was on in that chapter in my life, dealing with my kids, um, my partner, people that I deal with. Um, just communicating every day, my mother, like my sister. Um, and it would take about a week, right, of trying those things and being like, okay, well, I tried that, but now I'm struggling with this. And then I would read the next chapter and be like, I know you've tried this, so now you might be struggling with this. And it's like, oh, okay. And then you do a week of that. And then you're like, okay, well, now I'm doing this better, but I'm struggling when I get to here. And then chapter three is, oh, here's how you might be. So it's, it's the book works itself out really well, especially if you implement it as you go. Um, it's a it's a set of tools that you have to learn so they take practice like I said I've spent over two years now every day trying to implement these things um, if you think it's simple to eliminate judgment both from your perceptions and what you receive as well as your communications and what you transmit it is not it is non-trivial most of us I would argue pretty much all of us I in Western society, I mean, I, I grew up in America, so I guess I can't speak for cultures all over the world, but based on the way the world operates, I can speak pretty confidently and say that almost no one is taught nonviolent communication. And in fact, everyone is taught violent communication. What I mean is, again, we're not talking about the same kind of physical violence. It goes along with the non-aggression principle. Not all violence is physical violence. Nonviolent communication means communicating with people in a way that seeks and provides empathy and we are fundamentally from a very early age trained to be judged and to fit in that judgment and what I mean is from the essentially the moment we're old enough to be communicated with 
we're told yes, no. We're told that our behavior is acceptable or unacceptable, that we're good or bad, and that doing what we're told or behaving, behaving, behaving well, or not misbehaving, that that is essentially how you become a good person, is by learning what behaviors are acceptable, by not misbehaving, by doing what is right and not doing what is wrong. And I think that makes sense to everybody that hears it because this is how we're raised, but we'll dig into more in the future. And if you read nonviolent communication and dig into it to yourself, you'll start to see that fundamentally that builds an entire system of not just communicating, but but treating humans and people that you interact with in a way that is entirely built upon judgments and criticisms and trying to fit people into your expectation of how they should behave, what they should do, what should, they should think. And, and I think everybody fundamentally understands be a good person, do what's right, and that sounds logical to them, and then you turn around and say, when you tell people they're behaving wrong and they're doing wrong and they're bad people, they instinctively react to that, right, in a negative way. Nobody wants to be judged and told that they're bad and wrong, right? Everybody thinks in some way that, they, that they're good and right, and that conflict <laughs> is the essence of poor, violent communication. So it's as much as I'll touch on those two right now, and this video is already longer than I was hoping it would be just because I tend to talk. So I'll end it there. There's definitely more to come. Um, I'm going to link to the blog post where I kind of introduce these same topics as well. Um, hopefully going to get more of that to come and then links to uh, some good resources, nonviolent communication, more important for resources. The non-aggression principle is a bit of a foundational principle, but anyway, anything that I think is going to be helpful for you guys to learn uh, will be linked uh, down below. So hope you guys enjoy this and I look forward to uh, discussing it more. See ya.